In this video, in under five minutes, I'm going to show you how I train my computer to learn NBA positions based off of just five stats. So why do this in the first place? Well, if you're an NBA fan or an avid mathematics or data science fan, you may find this a little bit interesting because normally we look at NBA player stats and see, okay, you have more points than, than, than you and uh, you're better at rebounds and you know, you're clutch in the, in, the, in the final seconds of the quarter, but all these observations come from watching the game being played live, as opposed to using data and strict analytics to see who exactly is doing what and who exactly is better than who. So let's zoom in the lens and look at this a little bit closer. NBA and basketball overall is played in five major positions. That's center, shooting guard, point guard, small forward, and power forward. And each of these positions play different roles in games so that hopefully the team can come together and win a game. And because these players have different roles on their team, they're more likely to accumulate stats in different areas over the course of a game, over a season, and maybe even over their careers. Given this knowledge, we can hypothesize that if we're given the raw numbers of a player's stats, but not given their position, we might be able to deduce their position based off of the stats that they've accumulated. And this sets up the basis for the machine learning algorithm that we're using in this video. It's called K-nearest neighbors. Basically what happens is that you take a small sample of players, a couple guards, a couple forwards, and a couple centers, and plot out their stats. There are five main stats that I care about in this experiment. That's points, rebounds, assists, blocks, and steals. Those are the five major stats that are often referenced but, uh, for some players' performances. There's no specific or perfect way or, or correct way to do this, but the way I wanted to visualize this is putting the scoring plays along the bottom x-axis and then put the non-scoring plays on the left y-axis. And so you have points times assists on the bottom and rebounds times blocks times steals on the left side. And because we have players that are different levels of experience in the league, we're doing points per game or rebounds per game, not career totals. So with that laid out, let's take a small sample of players and just plot their points on this graph here. Immediately, you'll see that point guards tend to be in the same region as well as shooting guards. Forwards also have a specific region of their own. So you might see that these now clusters are a little bit more obvious. And so this is what we call the training process of the algorithm. We take a sample of players that we know their stats and their positions and plot that on a chart or just record their information. And that allows us to see generally what these players do on the court and what their positions are. This sets us up for our testing procedure, which is where we introduce a new player into the mix we have just their stats, but we do not have any idea what their position is. We can take their stats and throw it into the mix with other players that we know information about. And then this will allow us to see, okay, your stats are in this region of the graph. This must mean that you are either between, let's say a forward and a guard. Well, K nearest neighbors, the way this algorithm works is that you choose a number K to see, okay, what are the K nearest neighbors in terms of what positions are being played by those others? So for this experiment, I used K is equal to three. So we're looking at the three nearest neighbors to see that, okay, what are the majority of the neighbors near this new player's position? We could see that they are closer to the forwards, which tells us that, okay, it's most likely because the majority of the neighbors are forwards here, then this player must be some kind of forward. So we're gonna classify them as a forward and we can check our results because each player in the NBA actually does have a position. And so earlier on screen, I showed the sample of players I used to train the algorithm so it could learn what NBA players' positions tend to have in terms of game performances. Now here's a list of players that I did not use in this training at all whatsoever. Their stats have never been seen by the algorithm, but I'm going to now introduce them and see if my computer can predict what their position is. Here are the results. We made some correct predictions for guards, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Chris Paul. These are very prominent players in their positions, so hopefully we would get them right. But we happen to fall short for some centers like Marc Gasol. 
Kevin Durant, Larry Bird, John Stockton. We had some incorrect predictions here, but that is not without justification. As you see, this model is a very baby model. There's not a lot of information that went into it, and so there's not gonna be a lot of accuracy to come out of it. Some of the pitfalls that this algorithm has, but could be improved on, is the number of players that I used to train this algorithm with. I only used 15, but I could very easily use 20 or 200 or 500 players from the history of NBA. There's also the fact that I only used five stats to differentiate between the players. I could add something else like three point percentages or turnovers or a uh, number of times that a player fouls out during a game or free throw percentage. Uh, anything can be used as an extra data point or indicator just so the algorithm can learn a little bit better what an NBA position is like, right? Also, every player's play style is different. Some players are extremely dominant in their area to a point where they play above and beyond into other positions. This chart here shows that LeBron James and Michael Jordan are so good at forward and guard respectively that not only do they excel at their own positions, but they also excel into other positions as well. That's probably why we predicted Kevin Durant as a guard when he's actually a forward. But all in all, this was a fun experiment to run. It took a little bit of time to get it set up, but it's actually pretty neat to see that we can take something fun like the NBA and apply a little bit of math and machine learning to it to find some interesting insights. So, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. I hope you learned something new, and I hope to catch you around on the next one. Peace out.